enough information to give you for your own spiritual reflection and nourishment. So you are welcome. All of you are welcome. You, welcome. Well, keep the solidarity going. The, you will not find a group as good as this group. Yes, so, can you do as soon as you yes, sir? No, in the sense that uh, these are the people who know you well enough to encourage you when you are discouraged and to correct you when you are wrong. So, others may be diplomatic or politically correct or unnecessarily envious and critical. But then your classmates, your classmates, there is a bond among classmates that is, that is so, uh, let me call it uh, sincere so, uh, often, especially since you have parted ways to the different dioceses. So maintain the bond, it helps. Especially when you grow older, and inevitably become fewer in number. Because you also, yes, it'll be fewer. And uh, remember also your generation of priests has its own challenges, which our generation may not have had. And we're challenges that come onto the priesthood, but some are generational. For instance, I'll give you one. The respect that we took for granted, your generation can no longer take it for granted. We somehow also enjoy the respect that was earned by those who went before us. But in most cases in your own situation, you will have to earn your respect individually and every single day. So, uh, these are the challenges that uh, you just have to discover how to respond to. But then God will always provide the necessary graces for response to those challenges. One thing I told the, your classmates here in Ansoka is that I'm not uh, one of those who get discouraged by such expression is as Nde Fadane Chitezikita na Madama Zakwifana Zuraina Seminary. Have you ever heard a comment like that? We heard it in our own time too. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> so, when we were being ordained, older priests were scared about the future of the church. Because according to them, we were no longer up to the standard. So, and for your information, of course, you are familiar with that passage of St. Gregory the Great. His meditation on the harvests is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And he's saying, how can we be saying that the laborers are few when there are so many priests? It can only be an indication that many of the priests are not good laborers. And before St. Gregory the Great, St. Augustine reflected on the shepherds. The shepherds who were feeding on the flock, but not feeding the flock. And this was uh, just about 400 years after, uh, in the year of our Lord. What am I der deriving at? No generation of priests that have not had the need for continuous struggle for perfection. So don't be discouraged about what others may think of your own efforts. Bear in mind also that whatever anybody may say, it is your own relationship with God that you should be using to assess yourself, not what other people will say. But I have one request to make all of, you, of all of you. Whatever happens, remain Catholic priests with emphasis on Catholic. I have, I have no doubt about this. The version of Pentecostalism we have in Nigeria has done great damage to the Catholic Church and to the Christian family because it has reduced our faith and our ministry to do-it-yourself faith 
and a ministry that seeks only personal convenience. That is very, very uh, unfortunate about, about, about our call. Oh, I, I had one classmate from, uh, in Rome, from Congo, uh, not Congo, his name was Congo, but it was from Angola. And uh, he would always be furious any time he scored anything less than the best in any of our exams. And he would say, Godfrey, look, I cannot have given up everything that makes a man a man in Africa and then remain a mediocre. And I stand with him. No matter what you do as a priest, you have given up everything that makes a man a man in Africa. Your personal will about what to do with your life. You can't today decide I will leave and go to this place or chart this way for myself. In ecclesiastical obedience. And for an adult African, that is everything. And the family life. If any of us has a child now, he will be hiding the child. He won't be proud of the child. Every African, every human being should be proud of a child, offspring. But I've given that up. And then personal comfort that you determine with regard to how you manage the results of your personal effort. Personal wealth. You have given up all those things. So, so, uh, let's strive for excellence because it is possible, very possible. And the no group is as prepared for that type of sacrifice for excellence as the Catholic priests. I still believe in the, in the power of transformation, the transformative power that Catholic priests have. When Marx says that religion is the opium of the people, I say Marx does not know how these young men are prepared to pull down the whole world in order to push positive ideas and change and progress of other people. That is not the effect of an opium. It cannot be. Because you have been empowered and inspired by your vocation, by your faith. So our vocation empowers us and gives us so much opportunity for good. None. And please pray for your bishops. Pray for your bishops. And any day, Unuga or one of you, boy, as an Abrugo bishop, the first thing you do is to send him a condolence text, not a congratulatory text. The only comfort in this position is the comfort of knowing that you are doing it for the Lord. That's the only comfort. Because uh, they pray for your bishops, for them. It's not, it's not easy. No matter what you think of how we are doing this job. How long can you on a seminary? <laughs> From jun is your junior seminary? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I took the right. <laughs>